Hi, it's Paul Anderson. Most people are familiar with the chemical gradient as seen in diffusion. So if I add some red food coloring to this warm water, the molecules are gonna quickly distribute throughout that whole container. What's going on at the molecular level? Well, those red food coloring molecules have a certain amount of kinetic energy. They're bouncing off of each other due to Brownian motion, and they're gonna move along their chemical gradient or their concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This is how diffusion works. This is how oxygen gets gets into your cells and carbon dioxide gets out and it's real visual. We can see what's going on. But this is only one half of a more complex gradient called the electrochemical gradient. And to understand complex biological systems like what causes a resting potential in your cells or how excitable cells like the neuron can fire off an action potential, we really have to understand this electrochemical gradient. What's going on? Let's start with a simulation. This is a PHET simulation. I'll put a link in the description down below. What we've got is some green food coloring on the bottom and we're gonna put it in motion. There's 50 molecules on the bottom. Now we're gonna allow it to bounce around. I'm gonna pause for a second and we're going to open up these channels. These channels allow that green food coloring to, to move through. So you should make a prediction of what you think is going to happen on this simulation if we let it go. So let's watch what happens and you probably got this right. So those molecules have a certain amount of kinetic energy. This random Brownian motion is going to move them up from the bottom to the top and from the top to the bottom. So we started with 50 and zero and now we have roughly 25 on either side. Now they can still move back and forth, but that chemical gradient, that concentration gradient has gotten much, much smaller. And so when we started by opening up that channel, that chemical gradient continues to shrink as they move that random walk from the bottom to the top. That's diffusion, and it's real visual, you can see it, but let's make this simulation a little bit more complex. Imagine I put some potassium chloride on the bottom and we dissolve it in water. So again, this is an ionic compound, it's breaking apart into its ions. We've got the potassium ions, which have a positive charge, and the chloride ions, which have a negative charge and I put 50 of each on the bottom, we start them moving, and now I'm gonna open up some channels that only allow potassium to move through. So the only thing that can move through here is gonna be the potassium ions, the chloride ions can't move through. Again, we're putting 50 of each on the bottom, so predict what you think is gonna happen if we let this run for a while. Hopefully you've made a prediction, and let's see what happens. So this is probably what you thought was going to happen. We're getting some of that potassium to go through. And so you probably got half of this problem right. So there are 50 chloride on the bottom, zero on the top because the chloride can't come through. But it's not 25 and 25 when it comes to the potassium ions. It's more like 37 to 13. So it's almost like there's a magical force that's pushing them in the other direction from the top to the bottom and that is the electrical gradient and and it's counteracting that chemical gradient and it's the combination of those two that is the electrochemical gradient let's zoom into that membrane and i'll show you what's going on so once a potassium goes through once this potassium ion goes through again it can go through this channel it's got a charge and as it moves through we have an increase in the positive charge outside the membrane and now we have a relative negative charge on the inside of the membrane because we've lost that potassium ion. Each time a potassium ion goes through, we're building up a charge. We've got a positive charge on the, on the outside of this membrane and a negative charge on the inside. Now, if we think about these ions for a second, these are all positive charges or like charges, and you probably know that like charges repel. In other words, they don't like spending time around each other. And so there's going to be a force that's pushing them in the other direction. And also, since they have a positive charge, they're going to be attracted to the relative negative charge that's on the bottom. And so what happens over time is we have a balance now of the chemical gradient that's pushing it in the, from the bottom to the top, this potassium, and then we have this electric gradient that's moving it in the other direction. The combination of those two is an electrochemical gradient, and it's reached a equilibrium or a potential. We could put use a voltmeter and we could we could measure the charge on either side of that. And since we have a separation of the charge, now we've got a potential, now we've got a voltage that we could actually measure. And so what's causing that resting potential in cells 
is simply the permeability of different ions moving across that membrane. Now we can look at the concentration inside and outside and use the Nernst equation to figure out what that voltage is actually going to be. And so the University of Arizona has put together a little simulator. I'll put a link to that down below as well. And you could run uh, the typical potassium levels in a generic human cell and it'll show you what's going on. Again, there's gonna be more potassium on the inside of the cell than the outside. We could do the same thing with other big ions like sodium, we'll have more sodium on the outside, and we could get a potential or a voltage there. We could do the same thing with chloride ions as well. Or we could run the Nernst or the Goldman equation rather with all of these ions, and it's going to show us what the voltage of that generic cell is going to be. So what are we seeing? We're seeing the molecules, we're seeing that chemical gradient, but what I want you to remember is there's also that electrical gradient, the one that we can see that's based on the charge. And to really understand complex biological systems, you have to understand both parts of that gradient. That's electrochemical gradient and I hope that was helpful.